Welcome to ESPN Sonic Blockbuster between number 11 UConn and number one undefeated South Carolina. Today from a sold out arena in Columbia, the Gamecocks put that 22 and 0 on the line against the Huskies. It's a matchup just jumping with many of the best players in college basketball today. Not to mention two of the greatest coaches, Don Staley and Gino Horiema. Hi, everybody. Dave O'Brien alongside everybody's All-American, the great Rebecca Lobo. Also, Angel Gray joining us in just a moment. You know, great players on both sides of the ball today. All-Americans everywhere. But let's start with Paige Beckers, who is having a terrific season for UConn. She's putting up player of the year caliber numbers once again for the UConn Huskies. Not only the 20 points per game that she is averaging, but the efficiency with which she does it. Shooting 55% from the field, 45% from three. She gets to her spot so well, whether that's driving or getting to the mid-range or the three-point line. And how about this, Dave O'Brien? Leading the Yukon Huskies in block shots as a six-foot forward. All-around game. Gino would like to see, despite the 20 points a game, her looking to shoot just about every time down the floor today. The counter for South Carolina, the electrifying Malaysia for Wiley. She has been spectacular. Uh, she burst onto the scene in her first game in Paris with this move right here. Just a spectacular freshman. So exciting to watch play. She's second on the team in scoring at 12 per game. Coming in off the bench, she can score, facilitate, and has become a much improved defender for the South Carolina Gamecocks. Coming up 19 against Mizzou, had 21 against Texas A&M. Now the big news, South Carolina is without player of the year candidate Camila Cardozo. She's in Brazil with her national team away for Olympic qualifying. For more on that story, let's check in with Angel Gray. Thanks, Dave. Well, South Carolina's defense looks a little bit different, a little bit different without Camila Cardoza's 6'8 wingspan in the paint. But what an opportunity for Aaliyah Edwards to continue on her tear in the last four games. She's had four double doubles over the last five. And when you're thinking about the X Factor, Gina Ariema said that has to start with her. He said and stated if she can hit three of her first mid-range shots, everything else will open up for them offensively. Angel, thank you very much. Look at the degree starting lineup for UConn. And the freshman shade is 38% beyond the three-point line. Nika Mule also 41%. But Beckers and Edwards, as they go, that's how UConn goes. For South Carolina, Pow Pow, one of the best three-point shooters in America today, almost 50%. But will this be the game? 6'3", Ashland Watkins really shines in the paint. You know this, the crowd support is going to be phenomenal today. The place is absolutely packed. Not a ticket to be had, and it's going to be loud in here. I expect a high pace. Both of these teams are really good in transition, like to push the ball up and down the floor. Could have a nice high-scoring affair here this afternoon. UConn at 20 and 4. Just beat Seton Hall to give Gino Oriana his 1,200th career victory, putting him in that class of three with Tara Vanderveer and Coach K. South Carolina, unblemished, 22 and 0 steamrolling the field as college basketball's most dominating team. And now we are set for the tip of our Sonic Blockbuster matchup here this afternoon in South Carolina. Oh, and by the way, for the Gamecocks, just a 53-game home winning streak. We're ready to go. And South Carolina wins the opening tip. It goes to Raven Johnson, the outstanding point guard, and we are underway. Pow Pow with a mid-range shot drops that down. UConn starting out in man-to-man -man in South Carolina right away just going to the on-ball action. Mule falls down. Pow Pow, great way for her to get started. There's not a better name in the country for a talented shooter than Pow Pow. As good as it gets. Outside here for Shade. She's going to back it beyond the three-point line for UConn. Arnold trying to dump it. Becker's on the attack and and that'll spin in. Bree Hall getting the defensive assignment on Paige Becker. She has good size and length defensively. Well, for the second game in a row, South Carolina playing without a National Player of the Year candidate in Cardozo. And we'll see what kind of day Becker's has coming in. Also with five rebounds, four assists a game. Looking to get the ball in the pinch post and then attack the basket. You mentioned it already, Dave. Gina Oriama said this is a game where Paige is going to have to look to score. They're going to look, run a few more isolation sets to get her those looks. She's such an unselfish player. That's been an ongoing process. 
And sometimes she's like, well, I'm not going to drop 30 on this particular team. This isn't the case today, obviously, in South Carolina, but a, a lesser opponent. Pow Pow way downtown and sinks it. A three-pointer, 49% beyond that line. She's actually been in a bit of a shooting slump. Mule on the drive, gets in close but can't finish. Fighting for her own rebound, his shade, and that won't drop. And it'll go the other way, South Carolina ball. Yeah, you mentioned that she's been in a little bit of a slump in the last five, only shooting 27% from out there, but not so much today. Nika Mule hand right in her face, and Pow Pow able to drain it. Now, one thing to keep an eye on on this end of the floor, because UConn's in the smaller lineup, Paige Becker, six feet, has to guard Chloe Kitts, giving up a lot of size in that matchup. Watkins to drive the lane, and the kick for Hall. A little bit too strong, and tip to UConn. Uh, both really good shooting teams, as you might guess. Huskies at 51% overall. A rebound here by Johnson, the point guard who had 17 assists against Clemson, second most in program history, can really dish it. Watkins gets a little bit of an opening. Here's Hall on the attack to lay it in. A couple of bodies dropping there. And for Connecticut, Becker's going down, and Watkins done, going down for the Gamecocks. South Carolina just looking so confident coming into this game, whether it's shooting the ball from the perimeter or attacking there in the paint. What a powerhouse Don Staley has built here over the last nine years. Six 30 win seasons, playing in the Final Four, five of the last eight, winning two national titles. Becker's too strong with that one, and the rebound by Pow Pow, a 5'9 senior. Johnson, quick dish underneath. No finish there. Watkins couldn't get it to go. Loose ball into the corner. And Connecticut will have it. And Don Staley also producing 10 first-round WNBA picks and nine All-Americans. An amazing program build here. Arnold on the dribble, the freshman from Wisconsin. UConn, Chile out of the gate, one for five, shooting it. And that won't help. Watkins with the pick. Raven Johnson with a pull-up. Follows her own miss, off the window, around and out. Well, they're getting opportunities. In transition, here comes UConn. That's what they want to do, really push it. Shade will knock it down. How about the young freshman? Ashlyn Shea coming into this game has been fearless. She finally drains one there, but certainly looking for her offense here early. Number two on the team in three-point attempts behind Beckers. Way downtown, Hall with a miss. And this is what South Carolina fears most about UConn, the transition game. Shade with a miss there. Here's Beckers, got it, mid-range. She has four. I'm sure UConn likes the way they are pushing the ball up and down the floor. However, Leah Edwards has not gotten a look inside. And yes, South Carolina is giving her some attention, but she has really been an anchor for them on the offensive end. Nice touch to knock that one down. Watkins. Well, she just has a world of talent, Rebecca, when you talk about her size at 6'3", number two rebounder on the team. She's had some monster games. You wonder, with the lane opening up a bit, might she have a monster game today? She's one of my favorite players to watch in women's college basketball. Here's another one as my laser for Wiley comes in. But Watkins with a 6'8 wingspan. I mean, she's got an incredible physique, so much talent. Seen her dunk already this season and last. And in her best basketball is still ahead of her. A closer look. And seven rebounds a game for the 6'3 sophomore right here in Columbia, South Carolina, her hometown. What a game she had in a first career start against Auburn. Where she wound up with 14 points and 15 rebounds. South Carolina by three on the drive, and that will fall off. For Wiley keeping it alive. Finds herself open. Can't stick it. And it's going to stay right here for the Gamecocks. Gino Oriam, his biggest concern when he was talking to us earlier was getting the defensive boards. And he said, I'm not so much worried about South Carolina 
in taking those outside shots. I'm worried about them getting the offensive board and putting the ball back. And overall, UConn has done a solid job so far corralling those defensive boards. Raymond Johnson to put it in. She's been to two Final Fours for South Carolina. And off for the point guard. Watkins finds herself open. She could hit that all day, and that means UConn will be in deep trouble if that occurs. Well, they've been giving it to her. Yeah. Man, Leah Edwards is playing way off of her, and Watkins has stepped in with confidence, draining the shot. UConn's going to have to alter how they're guarding her. Mule, six assists per contest. Bounces here for Beckers, the junior and former player of the year. Just getting started here in the first on an amazing sports day in our country, and that'll rattle home Shade. Get 38% beyond that three-point line. It's a tough environment. It's a tough environment for a visiting team to come in, especially for a freshman. I'm so impressed right now with Ashlyn Shade and the mentality with which she's playing. Of course, we're keeping an eye on Caitlin Clark going for the all-time scoring record in women's college basketball. Johnson, no, that was kind of ugly. Up ahead, off the fingers of Mule, and that's going to go out of play. That's three turnovers now for the Huskies. What a game we have here in Columbia, and some of the young players are stepping up big. First, Ashlyn Watkins hitting a couple from 15 feet to get the Gamecocks going, and Ashlyn Shade stepping in big time for these threes. You think about excellence over the last 10 years, you think about these two programs, South Carolina and UConn, and what they've been able to do on the floor year after year. It's really been extraordinary. A sonic blockbuster. UConn and South Carolina. Look at the winning percentages. Just amazing. 66 combined NCAA tournament wins and four national titles combined. Just blows you away. I mean, what these two coaches have done at their respective programs is incredible. Don Staley and Gino Oriema. Gino in his 39th year. Don Staley in her 16th season. And the number one team in the country. Gino trying for the upset today on the road, but just recently came up with win number 1,200. He joked about that. He said, when they asked him, you know, what are you shooting for? He said, this is not casino ATM time. They spit out hundreds. There isn't a number I'm searching for. There's no whale I'm chasing. I know I'm never going to be number one in wins. Okay. Some started to wonder, well, is he thinking about the timeline of hanging it up? A foul here. We had a chance to chat with him today, and he sounded like he was in a great frame of mind and great shape. I think he just sees that more as Tara Vanderveer, you know, is the one who's leading him right now, and it doesn't seem like she will be leaving the game anytime soon. Mule with the foul, her first. And Tessa Johnson at the line, good foul shooter, 80% from Albertville, Minnesota. McDonald's All-American, but just about everybody is on the South Carolina <laughs> roster. You got 11 players. Eight of them are McDonald's All-Americans. You talk about the recruiting Don Staley has done off the charts. We asked her today, you know, do you look for a certain personality of player and bring them here, or do you mold them the way you want when they get here? And she said it's a little bit of both, actually. Yeah, that was a great question by you. And she said it's not only just molding the player, but also sort of their support system and the loved ones around them, understanding what the expectations are. Well, Wiley on the drive with that quick step, but can't knock it down. Loose ball almost picked up by Mule on the attack. Arnold back out top. Edwards with a rare touch. Here in the first half, and front rimmed it. She's been oh so quiet in this first quarter. Yeah, just because she has not gotten a lot of looks. Watkins forced it up there, back it in, and she'll go to the line. Boy, so much talent there. Ashlyn, Ashlyn Watkins. Watkins. She has gotten an opportunity the last four games to start, especially with Camila Cardoso being away, and she has made the most of it there. Driving to the basket. We saw her hit the mid-range buckets earlier in the game and keep an eye on that. Aliyah Edwards picks up a foul. Gina Oriama talking to us about how important it is for both Aliyah Edwards and Paige Beckers to be on the floor out of foul trouble. Part of the game for Watkins that needs to improve is foul shooting. 
but that's going to be a violation in the lane, so that won't count. The Thursday primetime show is in Knoxville this week. South Carolina taking on Tennessee. A win over the number one Gamecocks would be huge for Tennessee's tournament resume. Women's college basketball Thursday, number one South Carolina and Tennessee, 7 o'clock Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. This ball scooped up by Fagan. Right back at it. UConn turns it. Arnold with the theft. And the block from out of nowhere by Watkins. Wow. I think she's showing you everything early. Ashlyn Watkins averages just under three blocks per game. Second in the SEC to her teammate Camilla Cardoso. And she can get up, use those long arms, and still retain the possession. Wow. She's been playing behind a great player, but a chance to emerge today for Wiley following her own miss, but the big rebound by Arnold, and she'll draw the foul. 2.54 to go in the first. Back to that block. Maybe we're going to see it one more time. I mean, Watkins, again, long arms, phenomenal athlete. I mean, for her to avoid the body of Arnold and block it from behind like that, elite athlete. Well, Wiley just picked up the foul. UConn with the basketball. Edwards with a strong drive. We'll scoop it in. Lee Edwards coming in at 18 points, nine rebounds a game. Fagan had the defensive assignment on Edwards that time, and Edwards able to take advantage. Trying to feed the post. Fagan. And that'll go the other way. But this is what South Carolina can do, right? They can send body after body, and especially when you're talking about the depth that they have in their post play. Fagan coming out, Kitts back in, Watkins has been in. That's the one thing for certain Connecticut does not have. They have not subbed yet here in this first quarter. The last three games, they did not sub until midway through the second quarter, whereas you see South Carolina body in, body out, body in, body out. A giant advantage. This is right to your point as far as the first quarter and substitutions. UConn none the last three games. Gino just doesn't have enough healthy people. Here's Shade and a front rim. Pull up pop. A little too strong by Hall. Another transition attempt here for Mule. Becker straight on. Got a great look. Can't argue with that. Boy, Edwards in the deck, and she's in pain. Grabbing at her back as she hit the deck out of the play. Watkins with the shovel. And great defense by UConn as Arnold came in to spoil a layup. Be able to pull up pop and again a very good look, but it won't drop quick looks though You're seeing from UConn in their transition their secondary and KK Arnold only has one field goal attempt But she's really impacted this game in particular with the, her pace and the way she's pushing the ball Edwards looks okay. She got back into this play on the other end of the floor pow pow. Yes from three-point land I'll tell you what watching her shoot in practice the last couple of days she was scuffling a little bit, but then the light comes on when the game starts for a great shooter like that. It's amazing to watch. Johnson pushing the tempo. Tough angle, but drew the foul, and she'll be at the line. Tahina Pau simply changes everything for South Carolina because she's the second leading three-point percentage shooter in the country. She is reliable. She brings experience. What an incredible pickup for them in the offseason in terms of a transfer. Number two in Division One in three-point accuracy, 49%. And named to the Nancy Lieberman Award watch list and the Wooden Award watch list as well. Samuels coming on now for Gino Oriema. In Samuels, six-foot freshman. And Ice Brady as well, the 6'3 rookie. So he does go to the bench near the very end of the first quarter here. And South Carolina at the line where they make 75%. We'll see about Edwards now getting a little bit of treatment. We talked about how she went down right there on the back. And went down hard a couple of plays ago. She bounced back and now getting a little running in on the sideline. Final seconds of the first quarter. 
Beckers off target. Big rebound by Brady to keep it alive. Stepping in, Samuels can't hit it. And for UConn, a lid on that basket. Nineteen eleven. For a second there, Tessa Johnson didn't see the pass. Kits. Walker gives it up. Johnson nearly lost it. Down to one second. Long one by Hall. Can't hit it. That's how the first quarter comes to an end. When we come back, we'll be talking with Coach Orieva about that first quarter and the season so far for the Huskies. That's next. UConn's Gino Oriema, 39th year now, right at 1,200 career wins. Last one at all in 2016, but five Final Fours since then. Gino, an eight-time Naismith National Coach of the Year. One of the great careers in the history of any sport, quite frankly, and what great company he's in. Their dominance. Climbing Mount Everest, so to speak, and knocking off opponents as they go. Total wins. UConn final four appearances just staggering. 21 times to get to the very top of that mountain and the 11 national championships. Let's go to Angel with Gino. Thanks, Dave. Well, Coach, you told us earlier that one of your keys offensively was to get Aaliyah Edwards going early with only one field goal in the first quarter. How can you change that? Well, right now, um, you know, we're kind of shooting the ball a little too quickly. You know, I think our guys are a little anxious. Um, so I think as the game goes on, you know, we get into a little bit more of a flow. I think we can get her more touches. Um, but yeah, we're trying to settle them down a little bit. They're a little bit over anxious. Ashlyn Watkins has been the impact for South Carolina to start. Adjustments on her defensively. Well, you know, you can only do so many things, you know. So we're trying to, I think where she's, where she's making those shots from, that's a little too close for us. So we're trying to push her out a little bit more. So yeah, we're gonna have to change how we guard her. Thanks, Coach. Yeah. Rebecca, it's exactly what you said. Shooting the ball too quickly. Why is that? Gina Oriana mentioned a team being a little bit anxious in this environment that, you know, UConn trying to push the pace, yes, but if they don't get layups in transition, they want to work their offense a little bit more, get Paige Beckers a touch, get Aaliyah Edwards when she's in the game a touch, but it's certainly natural for a player in this environment when you're coming down, you just want to get it all back quickly. I mean, for a sportsman, it's a great environment to be a part of and watch a game like this place absolutely packed for another sellout for South Carolina and that looked like maybe a turned ankle by Samuel she's hobbled as she backs away pow pow again another one for three-point land she is off to the races with 11 just automatic when she is on it is automatic on with the drive scoops it up and in KK Arnold, the freshman out of Germantown, Wisconsin. Here's Pow Pow again, around and out, but it looked really good coming out of the hand. But the follow is up and good by Kitts. And South Carolina looking awfully confident right now. Beckers catches, fires, and swishes into triple. This is fun to watch. <laughs> sure is. High level basketball is fun to watch. You got great players on both sides. Kitts will fill it up. Dropping that one home, the 6-2 sophomore. You get two sides that can really shoot it. And a traveling violation on Arnold of UConn. Tina Pow Pow just absolutely on fire. Three of four right now from three. You give her a little bit of room, she's going to drain it. Paige Beckers, similarly, the other end. Barely any space, still able to get, off, get it off and hit the three. Don Staley. Telling us out at the workout today, I need another pow pow. That's what I need. <laughs> like everybody in America does, too. Right. I don't know if there is another pow pow. 26 16. On the high post, Watkins. He's been a bright star early in this one. Raven Johnson trying to penetrate. Got in there for the bank shot. Very strong move. And UConn with a quick response as Shade will drop in too. If this pace continues like this, it is certainly at the advantage, to the advantage of South Carolina just because of their depth and fatigue. 
Possession error will keep it on this end. Bree Hall had lost it for a moment. Did a great job hitting the deck to recover. When you talk about South Carolina as a three-point shooting threat, and they're 41% as a team, which is awfully high. For so long, it was all about the paint and how much they kill you in that lane. Now the game has totally changed when you have to prepare for South Carolina. Last year, most teams played them in zone or sagging man-to-man -man and just clogged up the paint. You see Chloe Kitts and hit another mid-range jumper. This year, you have to defend South Carolina completely differently. Whistle underneath. Looks like they got Chloe Kitts for a personal there. 7.51 to go before halftime. Chloe Kitts isn't as flashy as some of the other players on the floor, but man, she's productive. And, and we've seen her at both ends of the floor get it done. And, and this is just one dribble pull up going left. Uh, we've seen her score inside on the offensive board. She's come over and forced to travel defensively with her help. Becker's spinning, firing, can't get it. And another whistle here. This will go against UConn. Uh, the push off. Nice Brady will pick that one up. And the ESPN's big Monday lineup featuring two top 10 teams. At seven, Wake Forest and Duke come anyway at nine, Kansas and Texas Tech. Men's college basketball Monday at 7 to 9 Eastern on the ESPN and the app. Meanwhile, South Carolina opening up a 30 to 18 lead on UConn, the number one team in the country, the Gamecocks. Trying to really put a headlock on this one early in transition, Arnold. Edwards, nice bounce speed, but they can't finish it off, and it's been a big problem here in the first half for Connecticut. Getting some pretty good looks. Pow Pow steps back. And knocks down another one. On fire. 14 points and a timeout. UConn. This is the pro level use of the on ball screen. Tahina Pow Pow stepping up. Let's see her. She's going to go right. Come back, re-screen, step back, hand in her face. Woo, what a performance so far. Hey, a week from today, the College Game Day crew will be here in Columbia promoting another SEC matchup that's Georgia and South Carolina. College Game Day covered by State Farm next Sunday at noon Eastern on ABC and the ESPN app. Now, Pow Pow has been electrifying with 14. She's made four out of five from there, the three-point line. During last year's Final Four, Tahina Pow Pow was still at the University of Oregon, and she told me she was watching the semifinal game where Iowa was playing way off of South Carolina, and she said, I was thinking, that could be me out there making shots. Well, today and all season long, that has been her out there in a South Carolina uniform making shots. Let's bring in Angel. We were at their shoot around and it was just very interesting to see she missed 90% of her threes But despite that had a smile on her face lighting it up today I asked her at practice. What are the three things that you look for in your shot? She said put in the work don't overthink let it fly has credited Winston Gandy the assistant coach for the workouts They put in before and after practice They have to hit a certain number of threes in that spurt But he said I'm bringing people along as well Bree Hall and Raven Johnson also one of those key players defensive on the offensive end guys you know, still here, yeah. yeah angel, angel don staley mentioned that today it's not just her ability to make the threes but it's the work ethic and and what she has instilled and how she has helped her other teammates as well with that watkins with the foul a moment ago her first you'll be on the three now inside it will drive the baseline shot clock down to seven try to feed Edwards in that lane, but it never got there. They now turned it over six times. South Carolina with their small lineup, they can switch one through five, and it just makes it so difficult for teams offensively going against their size and length when they can switch at every position. Beckers. That clangs away. Rebound mishandled. Pow Pow trying to roll it. And UConn comes away. So they'll get a second crack at it. A little bit fortunate there. Buell directing traffic, the point guard from Croatia. Edwards, a deep one, too strong. Now one thing Gino Ariemo was talking about, 
She really needs to hit that 12, 13, 14, 15 footer to keep them honest defensively, but it's just not happening. It's something she has been able to do consistently, though, throughout the course of this season. Hits, draws the foul. And it's interesting too, Dave, UConn here has their big lineup in. They're about to sub and, and go back with their small lineup. And they've had to go big because of the sa size of South Carolina. But the offensive end where UConn has had success this season is going small and using those mismatches to their advantage. Well, Wiley back in, the gifted freshman right here in Columbia, South Carolina. Where she won four state basketball titles. Then nothing but win. Another reach and another foul here on UConn. UConn coming in number 11, South Carolina. Number one, that'll go against Mule, her second foul. Nikki Mule got in foul trouble in UConn's game against Notre Dame, and it was very, very impactful. They do need her on the floor. Pow, pow, releases. Yes! Everything falling for her. Talk about a confident shooter. And Angel's exactly right. I mean, you can miss some shots in practice, but if you're a great shooter, you make them in the games. And she is. Edwards scoops that up for two. Only four points for Edwards, who's averaging 18. And the last five games, 21 points a game. Hits forcing the pass and picked off by the Huskies. Trying to cut into this lead. From the corner, long one won't fall for Shade. Raven Johnson, pow pow again. Johnson, too strong. Watkins, and that'll rattle home. That possession on that offensive board, I thought you kind of looked a little bit tired. Watkins with eight, turned over again. Raven off the dribble. David Johnson again. Some contact, no foul on that. I think both sides wanted that. Out and roll with 4.16 to go. Well, Caitlin's chase, we're keeping an eye on that. Our Jeep halftime report. She is eight away from the record. Also, Florida State and Notre Dame a marathon. And that's all coming up on our Jeep halftime report. And the whole country keeping an eye on Caitlin Clark, of course, who came in 39 away from breaking the all-time scoring record. Paul Wiley crashing in. And they're going to call that an offensive foul. Um, well, let's see. She is up and a little bit dinged up, too. And in some pain, fouling against her. That's her second. And a little bit balky as she walks away. Yeah, her right knee took most of the, oh, she grabs her left knee. It looked like her right knee took the contact against Paige Becker's thigh. So UConn basketball. Becker's, yes, swishes in a three-pointer. Give her 10. They need a lot more of that. Trying to close this gap in the first half. Going to get it inside single digits by halftime. Watkins going for the loose ball and knocked out by UConn. And we were talking to Gino Oriema before the game about Caitlin Clark and a conversation he had with her a couple of years ago. They made a profound impact on Caitlin and how she saw herself as a national presence. And she has given Gino a lot of credit for that. That one too strong. A closing in on an all-time record, and we'll keep you updated on that. Setting up a long one, Shade. Excellent look there, but it wouldn't fall. Bo Wiley so quick with that step. Nice give underneath, and the easy two for Fagan. That's what Paul Wiley does so well, just pushing the pace. She's a terrific passer, but so dangerous as a finisher as well. Edwards, yes. Two pointer on net, six points. Aliyah, the senior, cuts it to 39 to 25. 
South Carolina playing without one of the great players in the country, Camila Cardozo, who's with her national team in Brazil. Johnson swishes that one in. That's Tessa Johnson, 42% from the three-point line. It's just so remarkable how different a team South Carolina is this year from last. Watkins again coming over to slap that free. Watkins looking inside. Cole Wiley looking in too. Watkins with a touch. Working on Edwards to the baseline. Pow pow on the attack. Off the window, but no. Coming up on two minutes to go before the break. And right now, South Carolina doesn't look like they want a break. Edwards trying to shovel the pass, and it's tipped away. Actually, nobody touched that. That's going to be South Carolina ball. Seven turnovers now for the Huskies. Ashton Watkins just has such terrific timing on her block shots, and part of the gift is doing it without putting yourself in a position to foul, and all of the contact is on the ball. There's space between her body and the offensive player. Man, she has been impressive so far today. She's getting a breather before the end of the first half. And a sold-out building here in Columbia, South Carolina. South Carolina leading the nation again in attendance. 16,122 fans per game. They've had seven of the ten highest attended games this season. And the beat goes on for Don Staley. That home court advantage. 53 in a row. 25 decided by 10 points or more. Beckers can't get the roll, follows the miss. That won't drop. And she had a couple of cracks at it. That's a thing to beat a team as solid as South Carolina this year. You have to make all of your open looks. Rebound coming out high. Cole Wiley going around the back. Up and two more. Such a fun game to watch. And the ball is in her hands. And look at this score. 44-25. And the crowd responding. Beckers kicks it out for Mule. Yes. And a three on target. That was a beautiful play by Paige Beckers, the baseline drive. That's a tough out to see your teammate on the opposite wing. Delivered it perfectly. 34 seconds before halftime. And I look at Paige Beckers. She needs halftime to come. <laughs> look at all the blue jerseys. I mean, it's tough. She hasn't had a sub yet in this game. And this, as we've talked about, not only the pace up and down, it's physical inside, all the things that can be fatiguing. You have to keep reminding yourself, South Carolina has a great player, a great post player. Not he. Right. <laughs> right. That's 14 points, 10 rebounds a game, and a great defender. And rebound tipped out off South Carolina with 19.9 on the clock. UConn, by the way, 9-4 and four all time against South Carolina, but the Gamecocks have won the last three contests. on the move never got to Edwards Mule has it five seconds before halftime Paige Becker's on the drive followed her miss got it that'll count and we are now at halftime so UConn it might have only been a couple of buckets there before the end of the half but they desperately needed those yeah certainly to keep this game within reach and UConn has missed a lot of really good looks in this first half, Paige Beckers gets that one to go, but certainly attached with it being a 14-point deficit. Tahina Pow Pow, a great first half, 16 points. Ashlyn Watkins, terrific first half. Angel is with her. Inserted into the starting lineup, being an impactful player to start. What are you feeling you've added so far in the first half? I feel like I add the energy. I'm trying to get my team going to pull away from this team. They're good. UConn is a great team, and I just I think that we can just push on them, just 
attack them and defend. Yeah. One of the best balance teams in this country when you're looking at Pow Pow and what she's been able to do for threes already. What type of spark does that do for you guys offensively? It gives us a lot of energy. It gets us all going. It, it lets, like, lets us know that everybody can score. Each, of, each and every one of us can score on all of them. So we just got to keep attacking and just pull away. All right. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Ashlyn, a star in the making. And impact the game many ways there in the first half. So we are at the break, and South Carolina is looking awfully good as we send you to the studio. Christine Williamson and Ray Carter for our halftime report. It's Sonic Blockbuster between number 11 UConn and number one South Carolina. Ashlyn Watkins and Tahina Pow Pow have combined for 24, leading South Carolina to a 14 point lead as we get set for the second half. Dave O'Brien alongside Rebecca Lobo. These two teams combined, Rebecca, for 79 shots in the first half. That's incredible. It's such a well played, fast paced game. And when you look at South Carolina and Tahina Pow Pow and how she was able to set the tone early, how she was able to navigate the two player game here. Nika Mule gets caught up on the ball screen, so she comes in, makes the first two points of the game, and then, again, if you're going to get stuck on the screen, Tahina Pow Pow has been so good from the three-point line, she will step right into it. And what did her shot chart look like in this first half? Well, a lot more green than red, and that's exactly what you want. She just had a spectacular first half, and in a time when her team needed her to set the tone offensively. Time for today's game track, brought to you by E-Trade. So UConn on the season 51% just 33% so far today in the 14 point halftime deficit for the Huskies ties for their largest of the season remembering they've only lost four games South Carolina perfect at 22 and oh as we're ready for the second half of our Sonic blockbuster matchup South Carolina's bench outscoring UConn's 10 to nothing that is a deep bench for the Gamecocks, and it pays off. Let's see what Gino Oriema has cooked up for the second half for his Huskies trying to climb back in this thing. Deal with a handoff. Edwards gets a touch on the scoop and a nice way to start. You would imagine that's exactly what UConn wanted from their first possession. First of all, touch for Aaliyah Edwards and then getting her going to the basket. Pow Pow, tremendous first half. Back for Watkins, who also enjoyed one. Kits off the dribble. Three Hall, the shot clock down to eight. Watkins again, puts it to the deck. It's now down to four. Got the shot up and hit it. I think she's just been so incredibly impressive that time, making something out of nothing. She looked like she was behind the backboard when she took that jumper. Yeah, very difficult angle. Knocked it down anyway. UConn, the 11-time national champs. They have faced a daunting schedule. Oh, Beckers couldn't get the bunny. Back out for Edwards in the second opportunity. Here's Shade, and in and out from three-point land. Well, we talked about it at halftime, Dave, you and I, that for UConn to get back in this one, they have to make the open shots that they were given in the first half. We've already seen them miss a couple here early. Yeah, they've had some really good opportunities. Watkins, yes, two more. Kind of doing everything she wants. But great news for the Huskies. Yeah, but completely playing within herself. She's staying at the speed with which she wants to play. Handing off for Beckers, who took 13 shots in the first half. That's what Gina wants her to do, get shots in the air. Shot clock to five. She finds Edwards on the back down of the lane and two more. Much more intentional already here in this third quarter for UConn to get Aaliyah Edwards touches. Well, the first five or six minutes, she really wasn't in the game. She's come alive since then. Watkins looking for Pow Pow to get free. Really good defense by Nika Mule there. And thrown away, so it pays off for the Huskies. Ashton Watkins, shot clock running down. Look where she is on the floor. That's a tough shot for a right-handed player to make. She's kind of behind the basket in here. Reverse pivot, drive, hit the little floater. So impressive so far in this game. Yeah, you watch her in practice, running the floor, palming a basketball. She's got so many skills. Raven will give it off right back to her, and she'll back it in. 
And a beautifully run break for South Carolina. Two of the better transition teams in the country at the very top of those charts. Edwards just lost it. No whistle on that play. Here's Kitts in the open floor. She'll drive it and score it. 6 2 sophomore has eight. Shade barricaded on the baseline. Beautiful pass there. Edwards really went down hard as she missed the shot, went sprawling right to the support. We'll see if she's okay. This has happened a couple of times here today. Keep an eye on Raven Johnson. She's just reading the eyes of Ashlyn Shade. And then just comes right in and sees that the pass is going there, leads the break the other way. Kitts, beautiful return pass for Johnson's bucket. Watkins with the foul to put Edwards to the line. Where she makes 75%. She's taken some hits today. In the first half, she went down hard on her back. Wasn't out very long. Senior from Kingston, Ontario, hits the first. 11 points for Aaliyah so far today. She makes this free throw. She will already have equaled her point total from the first half here early in the third quarter. So she does that. 52-36 South Carolina. How about a little two-man game with Tahina Pow Pow. She's been so good in it already. Watkins wants the paint. Kind of forced that. No whistle. There's been a lot of physical play on both ends of the floor in the paint. I think the officials have done a very good job letting them play from the corner. The long one won't drop. Arnold off target. Raven looking up for Pow Pow. Johnson back inside. Great feed. Kitts couldn't hit it. They did everything except make the basket. UConn being more deliberate here in the third quarter. Once they get in the quarter court, we saw so many quick fire shots in the first half. Tend to get up a shot now for the Huskies. Beckers hitting 45% beyond the three point line. Gives it to Edward. She's going to get touched every time down. Not there that time. Continues to be physical inside. It'll be UConn ball. The shot clock down to two on Thursday. SEC Network has a women's basketball game. It's Bandy and Texas A&M. The Aggies 11 and 2 at home this year. SEC Women's College Basketball Thursday, 9 o'clock Eastern on SEC Network and the ESPN app. Shea Ralph has done an incredible job at Vanderbilt this season. Nice inbounds and a quick strike by Arnold. I should say Shade getting that one to go. And she has nine. And Johnson will back it out and set it up now for South Carolina. What did you say, 79 combined possessions in the first half? 79 shots. We're yeah. not going to have that many here if this pace <laughs> continues. It was dizzying. Yes. Pow, pow. Johnson to drive it and can't score it. Got it back, won it, and got two more. The start of that play, you saw the two-man game, and two UConn players went with Pow Pow. I don't know if that was the scheme or if they were supposed to switch, but certainly having to do things differently after the first half that she had. Five minutes to go in the third, and a whistle. Watkins pleading her case. Bud will pick up the personal. And that'll be number three on Watkins. So Iowa loses, and Caitlin doesn't get the record. That's one bad day for Iowa all the way around. And she remains eight points away from the all-time record. Meanwhile, South Carolina on top. UConn trying to cut in, 54-38, and another whistle. And at this point in the game, they really have let them play. And it's been physical. It has been physical. I think overall, though, it's been a really well officiated game. You and I were just saying that in the yep. commercial break. They've done a really good job. Rule up high. Another whistle. This one off the ball. Crowd doesn't love that. Johnson just trying to be physical with Paige Becker. His keeper from catching the ball back. Johnson, 6 1 freshman with her first. Becker's to bring it in. Gets it in for Edwards. You're looking for a cutter. Edwards fouled from behind. 
That foul on Fagan. That time UConn ran the same under out of bounds play, but instead of setting the down screen for Paige Becker, she set the back screen, and that's what got Aaliyah Edwards open. Don saying no, no, no. And it'll be Edwards back to the line. And she had a career game against St. John's last Sunday 33 points and 13 rebounds. Just 13 points so far today. And just went for 18 and 15 against Seton Hall on Wednesday. So inside a week, career bests in scoring and rebounding. Connecticut extending their pressure a little bit after the free throw. Let's see if Pow Pow gets a look. Yes, she does right away. That's her first shot of the second half. And that was a really good open look, too. She has been draining those. Beckers around and out. She balled up her fist as she raced to the other end of the floor. That's a shot she can also make in her sleep. Johnson can't swish it. And a battle for the rebound and a whistle here. So the whistle, the pace of the whistle is picking up here in the second half. And that'll be on Beckers, her first. I don't understand that call. That was a tough angle to see it from, though. I'm with you. Tessa Johnson on the dribble. She wants to line up a long one. Both sides going a little bit cold at the moment, but a second try here as Fagan got to the loose ball. Pow Pow gives it up. Chloe Kitts. A nice impact on this game. Went for the window, couldn't bank it. Mule lost it right to Raven Johnson. High dribble got away. She's going to push the tempo and bank it in. Raven Johnson had 17 assists against Clemson, one of the great passers in the country, but can score it too. Lead up to 16. Mule from the foul line, no. South Carolina. Oh, great feed for Kitts. Raven Johnson put it right there. Yeah, Gino needs a timeout. South Carolina. They have increased their halftime lead by four. Raven Johnson has been getting it done on both ends of the floor. Just a beautiful dime to Chloe Kids. The big doing a great job running. Pac-12 women's college basketball featured on ESPN2. Arizona taking on freshman phenom Juju Watkins and number 10 USC. Juju with eight games this season with at least 30 points, including 51 in their upset over Stanford. She has been incredible this season. As we welcome you back here to Columbia, time for our Need to Know, brought to you by the USPS Ground Advantage. And that was Juju, who has just been a marvel. UConn and South Carolina, 3.01 to go here in the third. And South Carolina threatening to really run away with this thing. It's incredible because just a couple of minutes ago, Paige Becker stepped into an open look three that could have cut the deficit to 11. Instead, doesn't go through. South Carolina does its job on the other end, and now we have an 18-point game. Angel, you were listening in on that huddle. Yes, you know, Ariana pleading with his team. He was asking, put it on the floor, put pressure on the paint. He said, we're in the bonus. He repeated that like four times. Put it on the floor, be pressure on the inside. They're four for four from the free throw line in this quarter, asking them to not lose that aggression towards the rim. And Angel, they're now two for two for following through with his request. Put the ball on the floor, put pressure on the paint, get to the free throw line. I guess that will be three for three. Edwards at the stripe again. The foul is on Kitts, her third. The other thing about South Carolina today that is so impressive is their ability to dish the basketball. They have 11 assists in this game. Six players have at least one. 
This is an, a marvelous passing team. They average 19 assists a game. It's another area where they are much improved from a season ago. Really unselfish. It's just part of their offense to share the basketball. Kitts going for it. And Mule going down and taking the seat. The 5'11 senior, Nico Mule. And of course, Gino Oriema does not have a stout bench. Two thirty-nine to go in the quarter. A depleted bench. You talk about the players who are out, and we saw four of them walking the hallway today, including Aubrey Griffin, and, and just walking away. And you think to yourself, had you know, any number of them been available on a day like today? You know, it's, it's strapping a group of athletes. That'll roll in. Nice touch there by Paige Beckers for two. 14 points for Paige. 58 to 42. South Carolina with a 53 game home winning streak, which began December 17, 2020. They put it on lockdown at home. Fagan with the basket. UConn in a 2 3 zone, and South Carolina going right to the sweet spot against it, to the free throw line area to Fagan. Picked off. Delilah with the drive and the left hand. And this is their biggest lead today. Last 20 point loss for UConn. The 07 Elite Eight against LSU. Beckers. That one barely got to the iron. Johnson with the give. Wiley, an acrobatic attempt. She'll go to the line. You wouldn't have been shocked if she made that. In Malaysia for a while, we talk about how she has improved on the defensive end, and then she's going to finish the other way. Explosive going to the rim. Becker's second foul. Malaysia at the line, 75%. The freshman who got up to a dazzling start. Got her career rolling in style in Paris against Notre Dame. 17 points, six assists, and six steals. If you're going to be fashionable, you do it in Paris to start your career. <laughs> That's right. Beautifully done. She has five points so far today against UConn. In South Carolina's close win over University of North Carolina. Malaysia only played three minutes, and it was because Don Staley was upset with her defensive effort uh, and she said it wasn't just in that game but it was in the practices leading up to that and she said it flip uh, switch has really flipped over the course of the past couple of weeks she said not just in games but in practice and how they've continued to praise her in her defensive effort not only the coaching staff but her teammates and they're just hoping she continues hometown kid who stayed right here in Columbia did nothing but win in high school. That may, may be the case all through her college career, too. Quite literally this season to 22 and all. Shade gives it up. Samuels tries for the scoop. Not there. Coming up on the final minute of the third. Johnson lets fly. Tessa Johnson nails it. A 9-0 run for South Carolina. And they are laying it on UConn. Shade with a pull-up pop. That rolls off. Edwards, good rebound. Right back up and in. Edwards has been, it feels like, the only answer here in the third quarter for UConn. Truly. So inside the last half minute of quarter number three, Remember, South Carolina is playing without a great big. As Raymond Johnson spinning will draw the foul. Camila Cardozo, their top scorer and rebounder, home in Brazil with her national team at Olympic qualifying. That's 14 points, 10 rebounds a game. She was just named to the Naismith Defensive Player of the Year watch list. And look at the score. All right. And Don Staley said, you know, I was kind of looking forward to this opportunity, see how other players would respond. And guess what? <laughs> other players have really responded. Ashlyn Watkins in particular. We were talking to Raven Johnson yesterday and, you know, talking about the head-to-head -head against UConn and the fact that 
South Carolina's won the last three, and she said, I guess we're just going to have to make it four. I mean, it's a very competent team. They have every reason to be that. They have earned it. Samuels in the paint, short. Last seconds. Paul Wiley almost got tripped up. She gets a heave off. And that's the end of the third. And it has been all South Carolina and Don Staley. We'll talk to Don in just a moment after the break. Her team is rolling at home. Back here at South Carolina, Don Staley's got to be awfully pleased with her team so far. She's joined by Angel Gray a moment ago. Coach UConn has struggled to find the rhythm offensively. What do you like most about that side of the ball and how you've been able to pay attention to detail on that side as well? I mean, we're, we're locked in. I mean, I, I think uh, if it wasn't for us being able to defend, it'd be a real hard game to watch. Unfortunately for us, our players are just locked in. They, we want to we wanna muddy up their offense. I mean, if you allow them to do what they do, it's, it's pretty basketball. And they're, they're so efficient that we just try to uh, knock a couple of percentages off of, you know, their high percentage shooters, and it's working out great. And it's not just your starters, it's your bench as well. Again, outscoring them 14 to 0. What do you like about that second unit? I mean, I like the fact that all of our kids are confident. All of our kids are, are probably starters in our program and probably every other program across the country, but they chose to come here because they know they're going to play the right way and we're going to prepare them to be a pro. Thank you so much, Coach. Thank you, Angel. 25-point lead, biggest of this one. And the Dawn effect. Look at the impact she has had since she arrived here. The SEC titles... They never won one, 14, with Don Staley at the helm. Final four is five of them, never before done here in South Carolina. And the national championships, winging it all two times. And gunning for another one, and they are the favorite to do it again. That certainly was not the case coming into the start of the season with people knowing that they lost their five starters from a year ago, all drafted to the WNBA. You see Chloe Kitts finish there. This has been a really wonderful surprise for South Carolina fans, the way this team has come together. And you were there when they got a stiff test at LSU, 76 to 70. LSU, the number nine team in the country, and that jump shot buried by Shade. It was in Baton Rouge, one of the best nights in college basketball all season long. And they continue to take on all comers. That LSU game eclipsed the Knights' NBA game in TV rating. And the environment was incredible. The student section, it was loud, it was hot. LSU had a lead, and South Carolina able to gut it out and pull out the victory in the fourth quarter. To beat the NBA rating, 1.55 million homes. Rebecca standing by her belief that TV talent drove that number. <laughs> no doubt about it. Fourth quarter here, but all Gamecocks today here on Super Bowl Sunday. If you missed the news earlier and Holly Rowe is on that assignment, Caitlin Clark did not eclipse the all-time scoring record. She got within eight points, and I also lost a bit of a stunner there to Nebraska. So she'll have more on that. Bree Hall. Can't get that one to go. It's going to be tipped to Mule. 71-46. Shade outside the three. Edwards. Nifty spin and a finish. That's been UConn's best offense when they've been able to get Aaliyah Edwards a touch somewhere around the free throw line, and then she drives to the basket. You heard Dawn in the interview and how pleased she is with her team's defense, and she's 100% right. You know, when UConn is really moving the ball and flowing and they have high assist percentages when they're at their best, and South Carolina's defense has been able to take them out of that. Off the inbounds. They can't strike. The shot will misfire by Hall. But they have had a great day. In front of a packed house, Becker's around the back. And the foul... Well, Wiley didn't think so. The Thursday primetime show is in Knoxville this week. It's number one South Carolina moving on to take on Tennessee. A win over the number one team in the country would be huge for Tennessee as far as their tournament resume going into March. 
Women's college basketball Thursday, number one South Carolina, Tennessee, 7 o'clock Eastern on ESPN and the app. With all due respect, a win for any team over South Carolina will be a huge boost to their resume. Just a little bit, I would think. Beckers now with 16. South Carolina trying to make it a 54 game home winning streak. Well, Wiley gives it up, gets it back. Trying to make a move. It was tough, but the follow a little bit easier that time by Watkins. 14 points for Ashley. She came in averaging nine. Leah Edward had, had to come over and help on full Wiley's drive, and that left Watkins available to get the offensive board. Arnold, nah, no foul, no whistle there. Bodies getting tangled up, so it winds up a four on four and thrown away. So about seven and a half to go. In South Carolina, their 89th consecutive week in the top 10. And then the number one team in the country. Now, the South Carolina men are having a terrific season. And combined, they have more wins than any men's and women's combo in America. That shot will go out of play off of Arnold's hand. So it's gotten a little bit ugly here in the second half, but a beautiful thing for South Carolina. Pow pow. Pretty quiet second half, but she was tremendous in the first half. Raven Johnson gives up the dribble. The entry, Watkins can't connect. Edwards out of the pack with it. And the kick is Shade. Yes. And a three-pointer on target. We talk about Pow Pow a little quieter here in the second half, man. She made big ones when they really mattered. Helped settle in her team, helped get an early lead on UConn. Well, while they went for the shovel pass, Watkins somehow got to it. Working among all those blue jerseys and draws the foul. If there's a jump ball with Watkins and two UConn guards, Watkins is going to go get that thing. So 6.29 to go. And still a 20 point lead. And it'll be Watkins to the stripe again. I think if there's a, a lingering part of her game that she needs to work on quite a bit, it's this. It's foul shooting. That one rattles in, but came in only 56%. But she has 15 points. And makes one of two, and they'll get another one. Here's Kitts. Kitts right back in strong. Wins it back. It pops free. Watkins again after the dribble. No. She'll go running for it, and she touched it last. Great effort that time by both Kitts and Watkins on the offensive glass. They don't end up with a bucket, but great effort. on the back down will turn and fire short and UConn one and done Raven Johnson looking to penetrate and throw it away Becker's got in there to deflect and steal and here she comes stepping into it knocks it down they call that a two-pointer and UConn will take a timeout with 538 left to play 74-56 in South Carolina. This game, one drawing national attention. Iowa and Nebraska, another. Caitlin Clark needing eight points to pass Kelsey Plum for the all-time scoring record. And for more, let's toss it to Holly Rowe in Nebraska. Well, thanks, Dave and Rebecca. It has been a crazy scene out here today. Fans started lining up at 4 a.m. to get into this sold-out arena. 
15,000 people filled this, these stands, and it was a great game. People were expecting to see Caitlin Clark break the record. She came close, 31 points, 10 assists, and 8 rebounds, a near triple-double. But Nebraska pulled the upset. Jazz Shelley, the Oregon transfer, played terrific for the Cornhuskers, 23 points. Caitlin, of course, will have another opportunity Thursday at 8 Eastern against Michigan at home to break the all-time scoring record, but a near triple-double here in Nebraska for Caitlin Clark as she continues her historic march. I can tell you there were fans I spoke with that had driven over a 1,000 miles from Arkansas, a mom with three little girls, to be here today. It was just a beautiful scene, and in the heart of football country on Super Bowl Sunday to see this building this exciting. They rushed the court after Nebraska won. It just speaks to the winning ways of women's basketball right now. And I know South Carolina fans showed up as well for Don Staley and her team there. Uh, just really a cool day coast to coast for women's basketball. Great sports day in America, certainly, and women's college basketball leading it. Holly, thank you very much. So she gets to do it at home. Caitlin Clark. Presumably. Presumably, yeah. I like, kind of like her chances. Yeah. <laughs> Eight points away, but... It's such an amazing story. It's caught the attention of the entire country. UConn, here's Becker as well, releasing time to knock it down in front of the shot clock and give her her average of 20 points. But this one, of course, did not turn into the game that a lot of people hoped. 16,000 plus here in Columbia. I think it was the game they hoped for. For them, certainly. Yes. <laughs> But from a national audience perspective, whenever you say UConn and South Carolina, you know, you're hoping for a great battle. That's going to be a traveling violation, so no basket there. But South Carolina, just too much for Geno and the Huskies. Certainly on this day, I think the daunting thing for everybody else is South Carolina was short a great player today, and it didn't matter. Hey, when you look at how South Carolina played today, you... And I watch a lot of women's basketball, of course. I don't know how you beat them. If, if they shoot the three ball the way they did just today, in particular, Tahina Pow Pow, starting the game off like she did, and then the balance that they have with their interior and their guard play plus their bench play. And to beat South Carolina, you're going to have to really catch them on an off day. Gets with a nice touch. Took a little bit of bump there. Didn't throw her off. She has 14. So a little bit of context. We talk about UConn. History largest losses under Gino. You got to go back to 89, 92. That's amazing to have to go back that far. My son was born in 1989. I played in two of those. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going to mention that. Didn't play that many, but I mean, was a couple of ugly ones there for sure. But I'm glad you or your son was being born. You have good memories. He's <laughs> <laughs> now 34 years old, so it's, it was a long, long time ago. I'll tell you what, it's been incredible to watch Gino over the years. And will he get back to another Final Four this season? He's certainly got great stars in Beckers and Edwards. But in games like this one, is that a rattle home for Mule? The bench becomes a glaring issue. And you've got a South Carolina team with a very deep bench. Not that we're telling Gino anything he doesn't already know. Well, Wiley, nice move there, but no connection on the other end, and that'll roll out. And they will retain possession with three minutes left. The only thing that had been an Achilles heel at two points this season for South Carolina was their free throw shooting percentage. And today, they've been stellar from there, 8 of 10. We'll take a quick break, 30 seconds, and back here to South Carolina. Tournament time just around the corner. On Thursday, catch the first of two reveal shows to find out who the NCAA committee thinks of the top 16 teams in the country. The NCAA women's basketball top 16 reveal presented by Intuit QuickBooks. That's Thursday at 6.30 Eastern time on ESPN2 and the ESPN app. So, Charlie, right now, South Carolina number one. Your number two's there. You got... Colorado, Texas, UCLA, Ohio State. Number one's also Iowa, Stanford, and NC State. There's UConn as the oh, number one three seed right now. That's a three-pointer on the money for Pow Pow. Continues a great day with 21. You have a selection of MVPs today for the Gamecocks, but I think the way she played in the early minutes of the first quarter set the tone. Yes, without question. 
and kind of put it on a tee today for the Gamecocks. That's a three second violation. 2.28 to go. Ashland Shade back on now for Gino Oriema. You know, an eight time Naismith National Coach of the Year just in his last victory got to 1,200 career wins. Timeout on the floor. And joining that class of three, Coach K and Tara Vanderveer, the only others who have won that many games in their extraordinary careers. Talked about Tahina Pow Pow and what she did to set the tone. The other player who set the tone early was Ashlyn Watkins, and she was left open early on. So what she do? She stepped in and made the free throw line jumper, and then when she could, she drove to the bucket, got to the offensive glass. She has made the most of her opportunities without Camilla Cardoso here, including sharing the wealth. And wow, some of her highlights will always come on the defensive end with the way she is able to block shots just such an impressive performance by the sophomore so two big stars today for the Gamecocks talked all day about pow pow Watkins 15 along with nine rebounds she came in averaging nine points and seven rebounds South Carolina number two in the nation a, a whopping 47 rebounds per game they just eat you up in that lane but the difference this year and shooters like Pow Pow, I mean, they can open up the game and they can burn you from outside, way outside, too. It's an interesting timeout to me for Gina Oriama to take there. I mean, your team's down 21 with two and a half minutes to go. And just curious, you know, what time, kind of lessons he's teaching and wants his players to learn, what he wants to see this last two and a half minutes of the game. Oh, well, you've been in that huddle. What do you think it was? Something about attitude, something, you know, just what he wants to see these last 2.30 and, or something about the moment that they're in. I don't think it's anything X and O related, that's for sure. Raven Johnson giving it up. She's been a bit of an unsung hero with 10 points and 11 rebounds today for the point guard for South Carolina. Loose ball and eight to get off a shot. Here's Hall to attack. Airborne draws the foul at exactly two minutes to play. And this went from a pretty raucous environment at the outset to more of a party environment here in the second half for South Carolina. Free Hall has had a bit of a quiet day on the offensive end, only one for eight, but especially early on, she had the defensive, the primary defensive assignment on Paige Becker, so exerting a lot of effort on that end of the floor. All the six foot junior, very tough defender. Drops those in, give her four points. And South Carolina has been in a comfort zone for a big chunk today, and Pow Pow has had such a big say in it. And Dawn is going to go to her bench to play some who don't get a lot of playing time here in the final moments. With a minute 43 to go. There's the kick and the long one on the way won't drop for Shade. Edwards takes a hit and stops the clock. 137 left. Dave, we've talked about how good Pow Pow was today, in particular early in the game, especially South Carolina. So we hear the ovation for Ashlyn Watkins and Chloe Kitts going off the floor. Those are two young players. And this is a relatively young South Carolina team, and you're in a big game in a big moment like this. You need someone who's going to do things that help you exhale, and that's what Papa did. By, by playing the way she did early, everyone else can kind of settle in and say, all right, we're going to be all right because our upperclassman is here. She's going to play well, and she's going to lead us. And so important for her early in this game to set that tone and help her teammates do, have that collective exhale of, all right, we just need to do what we do. Five or seven from three, but I thought you made a great point when she hit the mid-range jumper, maybe 16, 17, that was her first shot of the day, nailed that. That was huge. Yes, especially because she has been struggling a little bit with her shot just in the last five games. Not a big defensive stop, but a minute 18 to go. 83 to 60. 
South Carolina had a 14 point lead at halftime and just grew that and it didn't really matter what the Huskies did not many times UConn has been on the receiving end of a game like this Seven on the shot clock. Edwards off a nifty fake. Will drive it and reverse for two. I'll tell you what, she has been really good. She has been really good today. The one player for UConn has been able to be successful while also being efficient. 50 seconds to go. Edwards with 20. So right around her average. Big second half. 14 of those in the second half. Paul Wiley. Rebound comes to UConn. So the Huskies to taste their fifth loss of the season. They will drop to 20 and 5. And the Gamecocks seconds away from being 23 and 0 and winning their 54th consecutive home game. A winning streak at home going back to December of 2020. Samuels on target. Last seconds here in Columbia and the fans rising up 16,122 and another sellout and man did they enjoy it. South Carolina rolls to victory over UConn. And they do it without Camilla Cardozo who's a player of the year candidate that should scare everybody to death. Who tries to beat South Carolina no one's done it yet. And they continue to beat up people. The unexpected success of this season for South Carolina has been the team that's been really fun to watch. The pace with which they play, their ability to shoot threes while also balancing that with a potent inside attack. Certainly a team with no weaknesses. And about to get a great player back from her team duties or national team duties in Brazil. 83-65. Tahina Papa is terrific today. She's with Angel Gray. Thanks, Abel. This was a highly anticipated matchup. 18,000 in the building to witness it. But Don Staley said you guys remain locked in. Describe how that was the case throughout this ball game. You know, we always got to lock in from the beginning, and I think that started with practice and scout. And um, Coach Law did a great job doing us, doing that, and getting us prepared for that, and coming out here and executing it. And setting the tone. You did that four threes in the first half. What zone were you in? I just logged in. Um, you know, the past couple of games hasn't been my game, but that's okay because we won those and it was bound to go in and it went in today. Ashlyn Watkins, her presence was felt on the defensive end. Camila Cardoza not with you guys in this team right now, but what were you guys able to display offensively, defensive, defensively in her absence as a group? Yeah, I know. I think Breezy, big props to her. She had the hardest job tonight and that was the guard page and she did a great job on her. And we miss Mila. Mila come back, but Ash is a great presence as well. You know, top shot blocker in the nation. So we got our defense behind us and offense. So we just got to keep it pushing. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you. Well, she's got a great smile, and she should be smiling all day and night. South Carolina fans will too, as they rock and roll 83-65 over UConn, the number one team in the country. Man, do they look like it.